in the false church on the Pentecostal side or the charismatic side, people believe that receiving the Holy Spirit with the gift of tongues and the fire of the Holy Spirit means receiving a tongue that is unknown, an angelic tongue or a tongue that's of a different language. And they literally think they haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with fire until they are speaking in this unknown tongue, whether it's angelic or a language that they don't understand. They literally think that is the epitome or the climax of their Christian walk with God. But be warned, because there is a false spirit in the churches that makes people speak in tongues, but it is not a tongue of the redeemed. How is it that you think that it's possible for these people, these Christians, to go into church to receive this supposed new tongue, and they walk out of there not being able to sing one part of the Song of the Redeemed. In Revelation, it talks about the Song of the Redeemed that only the 144,000 can sing. The 144,000 are not literally only 144,000. Just as there is not only 666 evil people in the world. It represents those children who are connected to Jesus Christ. And they sing a new song that only they can sing. And it has only been given to those that are connected to the Holy Spirit who have humbled themselves before God to receive this new tongue, this new song. This new song is not what they're singing in church. In the false church, they make up this Holy Spirit. And they say that you receive your new tongue once you come into church and you receive this, this spirit that makes you speak in a different language. And so they prophesy over you, they put their they put their hand on your head and they start repeating something over and over again. Maybe something like, receive the Holy Spirit, receive the Holy Spirit. And what they do is very similar to a form of witchcraft. Some people call the Kundalini Spirit. But it's very repetitive and we know that Jesus spoke against that. He said that, you know, religious people think they'll be heard for their many words or their repetitious prayers. The real Holy Spirit is not like that. In fact, I want to read to you what the prophet Joel said in regards to the Holy Spirit and tongues. And this is found in Joel chapter 2. I'm going to start in verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now prophecy is a tongue because as soon as you share that prophecy with others to edify them in the Lord, you're speaking with a new tongue, a tongue that came from heaven, not your own English words or whatever language you speak in. That prophecy came from heaven. Your old men shall dream, dream, shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Both dreams and visions that come from heaven by the Holy Spirit, if you share them, it becomes a tongue. It's your new tongue that is the song of the redeemed. Not just a dream or a vision that you had out of your own flesh, but if it truly came from the Holy Spirit, that is your new tongue. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, among the remnant who calls, or among the remnant whom the Lord calls. We know that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of this true prophecy. In other words, if we are connected to the Spirit of God, He will give us the song of the redeemed, and we will speak prophecy, we will speak truth. 
This is the true spirit of God that needs to enter us. We need to allow, we need to allow the spirit of God to enter us and to work through us. He doesn't possess us like an evil spirit, forcing us to fall on the ground and laugh with strange and bizarre manifestations of the supposed Holy Spirit, holy laughter, speaking in these supposed tongues that are the Holy Spirit, spiritual tongue or a prayer language. They have made a fabricated Holy Spirit. Now, some of you may say, well, I'm just speaking against the spiritual language, the prayer language that the Apostle Paul spoke of. That's also not true. I myself also pray in a tongue. And the Holy Spirit has given me a tongue to speak against Satan, to rebuke Satan. But the church has twisted this. And they say that, you know, if you haven't received this specific tongue, then you haven't really been baptized in the Holy Spirit. They say you have to receive that prayer tongue, that unknown tongue. And they think that that itself is the the very top of your spiritual walk with God, as if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit unless you're praying in their sort of tongue. It's a hoax. Don't be deceived by what some people call the Kundalini spirit, which is actually a, a form of Hindu false god worship. Don't be deceived by these false spirits that are in church claiming to be a new tongue. These guys don't sing the song of the redeemed. They don't have true prophecies that come from the Holy Spirit. So how is it possible that they are praying in a tongue, that they are speaking in this new tongue, but they can't sing the song of the redeemed? That would be an impossibility. It's absolutely impossible to have heard from the Holy Spirit, to be singing the song of the redeemed, but then to be going outside into the world and living life in sin. It's all a fabrication. It's a fake tongue that they have in church. Fake dreams, fake visions, fake interpretations. It's all for pride, for show, for money, to make them feel like they're safe and secure because they've received the Holy Spirit. But don't be deceived by this nonsense in church and the fake charismatic Pentecostal tongue that they parade around acting like it's the Holy Spirit. We need to make sure that we receive the true tongue that comes from the Holy Spirit, the song of the redeemed, prophecies, visions that really come from the Lord. You will know the difference by their fruit. Does their fruit prove that every single day that they're taking up their cross, denying themselves, living holy? Are they living on the the word of God, the bread of life? that comes from heaven? Or are they just conjuring up something, conjuring up their own ideas, conjuring up evil spirits, calling it the Holy Spirit, conjuring up feelings, emotions? Or are they really living on the word, the power of God? We need to make sure that we differentiate and that we can really tell the difference between Satan, his fabricated supposed Holy Spirit, and the true Holy Spirit that cannot be fabricated. Even in Daniel's day, there were fake magicians. Remember that, I believe it's called the Chaldeans, the Chaldeans, however you pronounce that, the sorcerers. And they would all try to interpret dreams, give prophecies, I'm sure. But it was only Daniel who had the spirit of the true God in him who was able to give interpretations to dreams, tell the dream to Nebuchadnezzar, even even though Daniel didn't even know the dream. You know, Nebuchadnezzar didn't say, here's my dream, now interpret it. He told everyone, I want you to tell me the dream I dreamt, and then interpret it. And everyone said, that was just religious, who, who was just spiritual. They said, no one in the whole world can do that. Dreams are only known by the gods. But Daniel was able to interpret it because he had the Holy Spirit in him. It wasn't a fake Holy Spirit. It wasn't a fake tongue. It was that he was connected to the one and only true Spirit of God. And we need to make sure that we're not being deceived by a lying spirit that pretends to be a tongue, that pretends to be a vision or an interpretation. 
And the only way that you're ever going to know the difference is if you just pray and say, Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit. I really want to be baptized with your Holy Spirit. I don't want to listen to to liars or people that are going to deceive me. And Jesus promised the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he promised that if you would seek him, that he would not give you a snake, a serpent, a scorpion. He promised the better gift, the perfect gift of the Holy Spirit. So don't go running to pastors who claim to impart the Holy Spirit on you. Don't run to people who claim to give you spiritual gifts in tongues. You have to run to Jesus Christ. How you do that is through prayer. How you do that is through fasting. You just pray and start asking Jesus, please give me your gifts. Please help me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and let me not be deceived. And if you really seek him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, he will give you himself, his gifts, because he is alive and he loves you. Go to Jesus Christ and receive his true spirit. Don't go to the false church and receive their kundalini or whatever false spirits that they're, that they're giving out these days to people. Don't be deceived by the deception that is coming upon the world.